Alright, so before we get into this video, we need to first understand why we would want to use object pooling over instantiating and destroying. And the sole reason is because instantiating and destroying objects can be heavy on the processor. And object pooling is a way to get around this um, pretty unoptimized method of spawning and destroying game objects. So. Here I have a spawn point, and all it really does is just spawns a bunch of cubes with physics on them. And what I want to do is make it to where I don't just keep on instantiating objects. I want to reuse the objects so the processor doesn't have to work really hard to maintain all these game objects in the scene. The first method I'm going to go over is object pooling a fixed amount of game objects in the scene. So to do that, in my cube spawner here, the first thing that we're going to do is create a queue variable here. So a public queue of game object, because that is the type we are working with, and call this, um, I guess, queued cubes. And a queue is basically just a lineup. Think of your um, old fashioned lineup, like at a cash register. That is basically what a queue uh, type is. So queued cubes. In our start function, we're going to have to initialize it. So queued cubes equals a new queue of game object. So after this is initialized, we need to create a variable. I'll call this uh, max cubes. And what we'll do is instantiate that number of cubes. And then we'll work with those cubes to uh, spawn. So we don't have to continuously spawn more and more cubes that will build up just waste on our processor and memory. So uh, we create a for loop underneath our cute cubes uh, initialization for int i is equal to zero. i is less than max cubes i plus plus. And in here, what we're going to do is instantiate all of these cubes and queue them. So game object instantiated cube equals instantiate the cube prefab at our origins position, which is the sphere here and at a regular rotation of 0, 0, 0. And once that is done, we can queue the cube. So queued cubes dot and queue instantiated cube. And there, once the cube has been enqueued in our queued cubes queue, oh my gosh, uh, it will be ready for use. So now anytime we spawn a cube, what we're going to do is dequeue a cube from our queued cubes. So to do that, what we do is game object and call this um, current cube equals cubed cubes dot dq there so the dq function will return a game object of a current cube that we are using that is uh, the last one in so current cube what we're going to want to do is set its position to our origin here so transform dot position equals origin uh, dot transform dot position and we're going to get its rigid body and apply a random force to it. So we can do current cube dot get component rigid body dot add force. And I want to apply a random force. So I can create a vector three variable on top of this. Apply that random force. And then we can put it back into the queue. So cute cubes dot and queue. And pass in our current cube game object. So basically, in our spawn cubes function, instead of instantiating a bunch of cubes every time, what we're doing is going into our queued cubes queue, and we are initializing its variables with what we want, and then putting it back into the queue so it can be used again if it's needed. And in our start function, we are initializing our queue that we will be using, instantiating the set amount of game objects that we want to use, and then using the, all these game objects in our spawn cubes. If we go back into Unity, and set our max cubes. I'm going to set it to 1000 since it has a spawn rate of 240. So I hit play. It's going to be a hard first frame, but from there on out, it will be much easier. And as you can see, it is going absolutely ham. And you can see that any, like, you can see all the cubes that are the furthest out, you can see them just disappear because they are being reused by the code. It's not instantiating new cubes and it's not destroying them, it's just reusing all the cubes that it's been given. And you can tell that that is happening because the scroll wheel here is not like slowly shrinking and that means that many more game objects are being created. 
they are all these cubes here are all being reused. Now let's work on a dynamic amount of cubes. So instead of having to set a current max cube count, what we can do is have the game uh, instantiate cubes until it is no longer needed to instantiate any more cubes because the queue has cubes that it can work with and it doesn't have to make new ones. And I personally prefer this dynamic method because it is much easier on the first frame of your game. So going back into our Visual Studio here, we can get rid of our max cubes variable and we can get rid of this a for loop that instantiate all the cubes. And what we're going to do here is in our spawn cubes, what we're going to do is all this logic here, we're going to put it in an if statement. And in here, we're going to check if the queued cubes.count is greater than zero. And this means that anytime we have cubes that are idle, that are ready to be used, then we will dequeue it. And we can get rid of our NQ over here. Now, what happens if our queue doesn't have any game objects in it? What we simply do is just instantiate it, right? So what we can do is we can copy this, paste it in here, and instead of dequeuing it from our queue, uh, what we're going to do is instantiate the queue. So instantiate, and we put in our queue prefab, and set the position to the origin. So origin dot transform dot position and quaternion dot identity. There, so now any time our queued cubes count is greater than zero, we will dequeue from our queue and use it. And if we do not have any have any cubes um uh, left in our queue, what we can do is instantiate a new cube and initialize it. The problem that arises is how are we going to requeue any cubes that are old? And the way you can do that is having uh, the cubes requeue themselves into the queue anytime they meet some certain uh, requirement. And in this case, what I'm going to do is anytime the cubes touch the floor, they can be requeued. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call this the cube requeuer. And I'm going to attach this to my plane. And in here, I'm going to check for any time it collides with the cube. So void on collision enter. And what we're going to do is create a variable that has a reference to our cube spawner dynamic. So public cube spawner dynamic and call this our cube spawner right here. What we're going to do is access the queue and enqueue anything that this plane collides with. So cube spawner dot uh, cubes queue cube cubes there dot and queue the collision dot game object there so I don't really need to check if it is a cube or not because uh, there aren't really any other objects that have physics attached to it so yeah so what's happening is if our queue count is greater than zero if we have cubes left in the tank that we can use and we're going to use those cubes and initialize a force on them at our origins position. If we do not have any cubes to work with, then we're going to instantiate cubes. And anytime the cube touches the floor here, it will be put back into the queue to be reused again. So this method, once again, is much better on the first frame as it doesn't uh, mass produce hundreds or even thousands of game objects in the first frame. It slowly accumulates, so it's much easier on the computer. All right, so now if we hit the play button, you'll notice that all any cube that touches the floor completely disappears. And that is because the cubes that hit the floor uh, be requeued to be used again by our cube spawner. And that is how you uh, use object pulling in Unity, the static way with uh, just a set amount of cubes and the dynamic way of a flexible amount of uh, cubes to be used in the queue. And I'll see you in the next video or tutorial series. Goodbye.